Hello and welcome to the next episode of my tutorial series FM Sound Design on the Sonicware Liven XFM. In this episode we're going to be discussing envelopes, specifically envelopes as they are used in FM Sound Design and envelopes as they are implemented in the Liven XFM. Not every synthesizer has the same type of envelope with the same parameters and the same features, so some of what I say may be specifically relevant to the synthesizer, but I hope as we discuss sound design, it will be usable to anyone interested in FM synthesis. So I'm going to start by describing in the generic sense a few different envelope types. I'm going to introduce how the XFM envelopes work, and then I'm going to recreate the other envelope types using the XFM engine, and then I'm going to discuss the implications for actual sound design. So the first envelope type that I've listed is an AD envelope. Now you may ask, well why is it an attack decay and not attack release? Release is a phase of an envelope that occurs when a key is released. Typically an attack decay envelope irrespective of how long we hold that key down, also known as the gate length, it will always go through the full attack and decay cycle. This type of envelope is actually commonly not implementable on synthesizers with ADSR envelopes. This is because as soon as you release the key, the envelope enters the release phase. The release phase will proceed from wherever the envelope was at the time it was released. So if you release the key with an AR envelope while the attack is underway, then the release phase will not actually occur. Um, or rather, there will be no decay phase and the release will occur instantaneously, resulting in a truncated envelope shape. So we won't be making those, but we'll be making something similar. The next type is an ASR envelope. An ASR envelope will attack to full amplitude. It will maintain or sustain that level while the key is held down. And as soon as the key is released, it will drop back down to zero. So notice that it's missing the decay phase that you might be familiar with from other envelopes. The next envelope I have here is the ADR envelope. It attacks to full amplitude it decays over some certain period of time and the decay would continue all the way to zero unless we release the key and then it enters the release stage. So this is often used for plucky sounds. In this illustration I actually have the decay phase steeper decreasing than the release phase. This is atypical. More commonly you have a shallow decay phase and a sharp release phase. This reflects for example a piano where a string is struck and it rings, and then when you release the key, a damper dampens the sound, causing it to stop. The next envelope type is the one that's probably seen the most frequently in subtractive synthesizers and most people are most familiar with, um, the ADSR envelope. The ADSR envelope consists of an attacking phase, which reaches maximum amplitude, a decay phase, which decays to a sustained level, it will retain the sustain level while the key is pressed and it will then enter the release phase when the key is released and it will decay down to zero. So notice that the ADSR envelope in the traditional sense, attack has a time associated with it or a gradient. Decay has a time or a gradient. Sustain is a level. Release is a time or a gradient. So we have constraints that they start and end at zero and we don't have any way of adjusting the level at any of these stages except for the sustain stage. In contrast, the final envelope type I'll be describing is envelope as implemented in the Liven XFM. Unlike the four parameter ADSR envelope, the envelope in the Liven XFM has eight parameters. Specifically, each of the A, D, S, and R envelope stages has a level which represents the final amplitude level that will be reached during that stage. Secondly, it has a time parameter which indicates how long that envelope stage will take to reach that level. Because of this, it is possible to have the attack, decay and sustain and release stages ending 
in whatever order that you choose. Additionally, the release stage does not have to end at zero, it can end at some non-zero level. So we could, for example, have a steep attack, decay could keep going up, sustain could keep going up, and then release could drop sharply. We could have shallow attack, steeper decay, even steeper sustain, maintain solidly, and shallow release. So there are a whole series of curves that are possible here. I'm going to go through and demonstrate implementing some of these curve shapes, starting with the ASR envelope. So edit mode, open a patch, init. So I have an init patch here, and I'm going to go through and set first the levels. Let's visualize that ASR envelope. Well, the attack reaches full amplitude, 127. There is no decay phase. So it makes sense to leave the decay level equal to the attack level. Sustain? Well, it sustains the full value. So 127. Release? Zero. As I said, all of those envelope types end at zero. So makes perfect sense. Now, attack? Let me give some attack time. The, de the, the decay phase? I'm not even using the decay phase. So it can stay at zero time. Sustain? Uh, I'm not using the sustain phase, so it can stay at zero time. Release, let's set something non-zero. So let's listen. Shallow attack, sustained hold, gentle release. Okay, so even though this is a relatively simplistic envelope type, you could imagine for certain instruments, maybe like a flute, you might want a gentle onset and a gentle release as opposed to those hard cuts. So that's an ASR style envelope. Let's have a look at the other envelope types. The next one, the ADR envelope. I'm gonna illustrate the ADR envelope and also configure it to work a little bit like an AD envelope. So let's init. So the ADR envelope. The attack reaches full amplitude, so the level is 127. As I said, it always starts at zero. The decay, as if you hold down the key for the decay, it will reach zero, so the decay level should be zero. And therefore, the sustain level should be zero, and the release level should be zero. So in other words, there is going to be an attack, and subsequent stages are going to be decreasing. Make sense? So let's set some times Let's set a relatively short attack because this is commonly used for plucky sounds. And as I said, on a piano, we have a long decay and we have a much shorter release. So let's press. So we have a fast attack, we have a shallow decay, and then when we release, it drops relatively abruptly. This is a sort of piano type shape. As I mentioned, we can sort of emulate the AD envelope here. The way that we do that is we make sure that the gradient for the decay phase and the release phase are equal. So if we set the time, 95, to be equal on the decay and the release phases, then as long as we hold the key until the attack phase finishes, whether we release or we hold it down, it's going to sound the same. So if your attack was zero or very short, your ADR envelope could behave like an AR envelope if you set the decay and the release levels the same. This works with any ADSR envelope. So let's jump back to our list of envelopes. Next, the classic ADSR envelope. I'm gonna try and replicate the shape that is illustrated there. So let me initialize. So the attack stage, um, we're going to go up to the full level. Now the next thing is a little interesting. We have two choices. Choice one is we could decay to a sustain level. The sustain could stay at the sustain level and the release could go to zero. Alternatively, we could simply not use the decay level because the sustain level can fulfill the same function. So let me illustrate. Attack level 127. Decay level 127. Sustain level, let's pick uh, 64. Release level 0. 
So this is a sort of envelope that's going to do the classic ADSR shape that you see when illustrating these things. So let's set an attack amount. Now, as I said, we're not using the decay stage at all. So I'm going to leave the decay time to zero. And what would traditionally be the decay time on an ADSR envelope is now going to be my sustain time. And this is one of the main feature differences in this envelope versus a lot of other envelopes you'll see. So let's play. Um, let me make a bit longer. So we can hear open, close, stay closed. Okay. Okay. So I think that illustrates the shape. Now we've gone through those shapes. But what I wanted to do is to talk a little bit about the possibility of the release stage not ending at zero and what that does to the envelopes. And this can be a little bit confusing. So bear with me. I'm going to illustrate this by using the carrier only, and I'm going to give it a release that is a level above the um, sustain level. So in other words, it's going to go up. And also, I'm going to not have it at zero. So let me just think about the shape. Let's imagine that my envelope was going to close fully, and then it was going to open. So I'm attacking to a full level, decaying to zero, staying at zero, and then when I release the key, amplitude is going to go up to full value. This is not going to sound like anything at the moment. Why? Because the sustain level is zero. So in other words, while I'm holding the key, you can't really hear anything with the times very short. Let's have a very short attack. Let's have a quite long decay. So we got a short attack, long decay. The sustain level and the decay level are equal, so they're both going to stay at zero. So sustain time can be zero. But now let's set a release time. So did you hear it got louder until it reached that level? And when it reaches the level, you get a sort of pop. I'm going to decrease the decay level so it's easier to hear this. Okay, so in general, you probably don't want your carriers to have release levels that are non-zero because you will hear the amplitude drop to zero when the gate ends. There's something that is not entirely obvious when working with envelopes that have release levels that are greater than zero. And what that is, is for every envelope that has a release level greater than zero, the envelope will not terminate when the release time ends. The envelope will continue to hold that level until the last of the other operators has finished. The reason for this is if I was using a modulator which increased to some certain level during release and then cut out to zero, you would hear the modulation cut out instantaneously. That in practice doesn't happen. So the shape of the envelope can be attack, decay, sustain, release, and then the release will actually sustain until the other envelopes finish. And then it cuts to zero. So this is a little confusing, but I'll, I'll illustrate it by making a very long release on operator two. So it's gone up to full amplitude and it's still there, it's staying there. Why? Because operator two's release phase is still running. So in other words, this envelope for operator one is being extended to match the length of the envelope for operator two, which is quite long. So I'm going to go back to an init patch and I'm going to talk about how we might use this nature and shape of the envelopes. My thinking is I'm going to make a carrier with a sort of rounded profile for its envelope. Then I'm going to have two modulators, and the modulators are going to come up, down, to some intermediate level. And um, one of them is going to come up to a higher level, and one is going to come up to a lower level. And upon release, they're going to change roles. 
In other words, the higher one and the lower one are going to swap positions. And that will hopefully give us the opportunity to give a tombral change during that final stage of the envelope, which may be interesting. So let's start by init patch, making our carrier envelope shape. So what I want to do here is I want to have some sort of attack level. I'm going to have a decay level that's above the attack level and a sustain level that is above that. And the release level is going to be zero. So this is going to be my sort of curved envelope shape. Um, actually, I just set all of those incorrectly. So let me go and do that correctly. Um, I set them accidentally for the times. So let's say this is going to be 80, 100, 115, and back down to zero. And let's set the times for 40, 60, 90, and 100. So let's just listen to that. So this has a sort of curved soft attack and then it has a relatively long release. So now I'm going to think about my two modulators. My two modulators, first, I probably want them to be at different frequencies just for more tombrol interest. So let me set those. Um, what if I set one to 1.5? So this is the frequency multiple. In other words, operator two is at 1.5 times the frequency of the fundamental pitch. And operator three can be at two times the frequency of the fundamental pitch. So now I'm going to make the shape of the envelope for one of those two operators. So the first operator that I'll make the shape for will be operator two. So in order to make it easier for me to hear the shape of this, I'm going to turn down operator one and turn up operator two, just so I can hear it. And I'm actually going to effectively copy the settings from one operator over to the other. There is no copy paste available here, but I'm just gonna move between them. So I'll do this and illustrate it. So I want the attack level to become full. I want the decay level to be, let's see, 90. Sustain level can be 60. No, let's make it lower. Sustain level can be 40. And then release level can be 90. So what I've got going on here is this is coming up. It's dropping to a level. It's dropping further. And then it's ramping up at the end. So I'm going to program operator 3 as well with the same sort of values. So what have I got then? The attack is 127 on both. So what I'm going to do on operator 3 is I'm going to use that number 40 in, chain, in exchange for that number 90. So let's just swap them around. Okay, just while I'm working on it, it's easier. So you can see that what's going to happen then is the sustain of operator 2 is a lower level. The sustain of operator 3 is a higher level. And then on release, operator three is going to decrease and operator four is going to uh, operator two is going to increase so let's set the times now so i want let's say a slightly longer attack than the attack of the carrier the decay let's say it's even longer the sustain even longer and the release let's say the release is even longer so I'm going to use the same times for operator 3 as well. So operator 2 has 80, operator 3 also 80, operator 2 has 70, operator 3 also 70, operator 2 attack of 50, operator 3 attack of 50. Okay, so now this is operator 2. So notice, because the release on operator 1 is longer than the release I set on operator 2, it's maintained at that level. And now let's listen to operator 3, should be very similar. So you hear operator 3 gets quieter when I release, operator 2 gets louder when I release, but both of them end at a non-zero value. 
I'm going to turn both operator 2 and 3, both of my modulators down. I'm going to turn my carrier operator 1 up. And now I'm going to add a degree of modulation of operator 1 by operator 2. So let's listen. So you hear when I release, the amount of modulation actually increases on that tail. That's an atypical behavior, but because the carrier still decays to zero, we don't get any sort of unpleasant termination sound there. Let's set some modulation from number three as well. I may try and swap the frequencies of these over. So I'm going to set operator 2 to be 2 and operator 3 to be 1.5. So we can hear that there is actually a change in the timbral complexity during the tail. Some increase, some decrease. Um, just to make this a little more interesting, I might add some feedback. So maybe I've gone a little overboard with that. Yeah, I quite like the timbre there. What I would do if I was designing this in the general sense is I'd probably want to add some velocity sensitivity. Um, I would say generally I like the sound of the decrease in timbral complexity at the end a little more than I like the sound of the increase. So let's have a look. So operator 2 is the one that increases. So what I would do is I'd make operator 2 a little more velocity sensitive, operator 3 a little less velocity sensitive, and operator 1 a little less velocity sensitive. So I'm going to use the velocity control here. Okay, so unlike a lot of my other sound design tutorials, I didn't really describe the timbre of sound which I was trying to achieve here. I just described the process that I was trying to illustrate, but hopefully you can hear that having something happen when a key is released, modulation-wise, by increasing or decreasing, but not necessarily hitting zero on the modulation, we can get some added interest. Let's experiment with the release levels just to see how they sound to us. So let's try putting operator 2's release level up to max. I think it works okay. Um, I'm probably going to bring it down a little. Let's experiment with operator 3's release level down to zero. Let's bring it up to max. So as far as this sound goes, I think I would rather the attack time be shortened a bit. So I'm going to pull all of these down a bit. I set them quite long just for the sake of illustration. Let's pull them all down. So I think one of the cases where you might like this release is when I hear this, I think of a bell, um, a bell having some sort of timbral change. I could imagine it would be nice to have this, 
this little swell, this little increase in complexity towards the tail end, just adding a little, a little flavor to the sound, even though it's not physically accurate or physically representative of what really happens. In any case, I think this has illustrated the points that I wanted to illustrate and demonstrated the features that I wanted to demonstrate. Hopefully it adds a little more flesh in your understanding of the envelopes and how different envelope shapes can be used to achieve different effects. In any case, I hope that you enjoyed watching. I hope you'll join me again. But for now, goodbye.